On the topic of leading people through transitions, what you're about to see is a brief recap of the information that we'll be going through together in William Bridges' book, Managing Transitions. William Bridges wrote this in the early 90s, and I have to say that I have used it almost more than any other leadership development resource for leadership individuals and teams that are going through change. So I'm glad that you'll be reading it. I'm glad that we'll be working it through together and talking about some of the implications. Big picture wise, what William Bridges does in his writings and his framework is distinguish between the change event or the change occurrence and the transition that people go through adjusting to that event or occurrence. And then he takes a fine look at what types of internal transition people go through in order to adjust to a change and become more comfortable and competent within a change, a new situation. He's very smart in that he's, he keeps it simple and elegant and he talks about three stages, endings, neutral zone, and new beginnings. And then he goes through each of these stages and talks about actions that leaders can take that will facilitate people moving more quickly and more effectively through the stages of change, of, of transition that they go through. He makes the point, of course, that we are not linear and we don't just go through in an orderly manner. We may get all the way to new beginnings and end up going back to endings, or we may spend a very long time in neutral zone. And that has to be something that a leader assesses and responds accordingly as he or she observes what's happening with members of their team or their organization. So the first of the three stages is endings. And as Bridges says, every change begins with an end. And you'll see a lot in his book and in the slides explaining what's involved in endings. Basically it boils down to loss and our response to loss. The other thing that's really interesting about the leadership actions that he suggests is that a primary one is to acknowledge the losses, is to simply name and recognize that loss is occurring. By way of describing the stage of ending, in addition to sitting by these daffodils who are clearly at the ending of their blooming cycle, my, I wanted to share a personal story about where I am in my life in two respects. Uh, one is with regard to the kids that I've raised and the other is re with regard to my mother who's aging. My youngest daughter is now in college and I've raised kids actively for 32 years. Uh, I had quite a span in between them. So for me, the idea of being what's now called an empty nester, or in other words, a, an adult who's no longer primarily responsible for raising children after all those years, the idea of who am I when I'm not a mother, who am I when I'm not multitasking you know, five people's lives at the same time, who am I to not be reminding my daughter to clean up her mess every Saturday morning, I used to think that I would miss, that I wouldn't miss her stuff, but in fact not seeing her stuff is like a little reminder that she's not here in our lives the same way she was. So the sense of loss is the familiarity of getting in a routine and expecting things to be a certain way and then all of a sudden it's not that way, so that's a loss. But a deeper sense of identity loss goes on, of you feel like you were that person in that role, doing these things, finding meaning in this way, and now those things have shifted and you have to redefine who are you now in a different role, finding meaning in different ways. What I'm describing is personal, but if you think about it, that happens in organizations as well. When jobs change, or leaders change, or even technology changes, organizational culture changes, there's a merger, there's an acquisition, there's a downsizing, it causes people to question who are they, how can they find meaning in this new situation. About three, or, uh, let's see, it's six weeks ago now, my mother broke her hip and she's 83 and she needed emergency hip replacement surgery which she got. She was in rehab in the hospital for three weeks and now she's been in an assisted living portion of her senior village 
for another three weeks and now she's back in her apartment as of yesterday. And it's been really poignant for me to watch her process of admitting that certain things in her life have changed forever. Not about the hip replacement, actually that's a good thing and she's going to, I think, get her strength and get her way back. But her eyes have shifted, uh, she's no longer able to drive for herself, and there's a big loss of independence and of an identity for her of who am I as my own person, who can pay my own bills, who can drive myself to the grocery store, who can make any call I want any time I want and see the numbers on the um, phone. And so watching her come to terms with all of those losses has just been a big reminder to me that really at any age um, we are experiencing a change in our situation, in our capability, in our uh, daily lives and the idea of being resilient and uh, able to bounce back from that becomes even more important as something to cultivate in ourselves and in those we love. I'm watching my mom now rebuild her strength, put her life back together, remind herself what her life was like before she broke her hip, and regain those things which she can regain, and it's, it's a very exciting, empowering thing for her after the hip break. But I'm also watching her come to terms with some things that, that have changed forever. So maybe some of you have gone through this in your own life. Uh, I'm sure there are many examples that once you stop and think about it, you'll realize that loss is everywhere and that that is part of the change process and, and really the transition that we all go through. So take a moment, acknowledge, honor all the feelings and, and questions that come from the sense of loss once you begin to really feel it and then learn from it that how other people are feeling, be empathetic and compassionate with others who are going through change and experiencing loss and think of how leaders can act in a way to facilitate and support people as they move through the transition in organizations and in our relationships. The thing to remember about the neutral zone is that you kind of want to go back but it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore, at least the way you knew it. And you kind of want to go forward, but it isn't created yet, at least in the way it's going to be. It's not a solid new structure or a process or identification, identity or role. It's not, it's not developed yet. So you're just kind of stuck in the middle wishing that you could be somewhere else. And that's why the neutral zone feels so long, because you just wish you could be somewhere else, where it's clear, where you feel competent, where you feel confident that you know what you're doing and you know who you are. And none of us really like the feeling of lack of competence or confidence. So it's a very uncomfortable time. And it's a time that needs a lot of repetition and a lot of interim work. So knowing who you belong to, knowing where you belong, revisiting what you believe in, finding things to work on and be focused on while you're in, in between are all things that will help during the neutral zone. But it is more challenging than you might think. So it's just to be, again, empathetic, compassionate with yourself and with others as they go through this kind of uncomfortable and long phase. The one bright spot is that things are possible in this phase that might not have been possible before because you were stuck in the old way or you're going to be stuck in the new way and during this end, the, the, I'm sorry, this part of the neutral zone, you can actually try new things and experiment because no one's saying no, no one's saying yes and you, it's a great time to open up your, your thoughts and your ideas and your mental models about what is possible for the future. So that's the bright spot within the neutral zone. This is a great example of the neutral zone. This tree has been uprooted from its original site. It's been wrapped in a temporary wrap and it's being taken on a truck to a new location. That is a perfect symbol for what happens when we are between the old and the new and we have to find a way to come to terms with being in the middle. Here we have a great example of new beginnings. And in a way, this rose bush is an example of all three stages because the branches that were cut back before the winter time 
are an example of the endings. And the neutral zone is where this rose bush was all winter time because all of the new leaves and the new branches and the new buds were kind of hiding in latency or in potential within the branches. And now this spring, the new branches are springing up and the new leaves and the new buds. So one of the things I want to call to your attention is the early stage of new beginnings is a little fragile because many of us, whether we're talking organizational change or personal change, are still wondering, is this going to really work? Is there really life after the change? And so we have many questions. And often people relive some sense of loss or relive some sense of disorientation that occurred during the neutral zone. So just to appreciate that as you enter the new beginnings, you want to reinforce and support and encourage these signs of the new beginnings, the signs of growth, the signs of reorientation that are occurring either on a personal level or organizational level. And that way you can uh, encourage and enable what is the natural growth process, which is to allow the new growth to take place and the new beginnings to really sink in and become the dominant feature of the organization or the life or the plant.